Hello, you buggers. It's Duncan Kinnear from DKG here. And uh, what's that, arsehole? <whistles> yes, it's a it's a guitar neck we've got to repair. Well, it's not really repairing. It's a it's a refret. Um, there are a couple of things I'll have to try and address, and uh, I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, in the meantime. Just pop this out of the way a second. Let's talk about some of the other things I've been doing while I've been away. <clears throat> now, I've kind of um, avoided doing this guitar neck for a while now. I've kind of procrastinated. And uh, as you see, I've built this uh, rig for stringing it up. Uh, probably being a little bit too anal about the project um, but the guy has sent it to me from America so I want to try and oh, I want to do a decent job before it goes back and uh, to be honest with you it's uh, although I've worked on other people's guitars for some reason this one you know with the depression and everything is scaring the hell out of me of just getting into it but I'm ready. I'm ready to go. In the meantime, um, I've been doing some repair work on this poor Ibanez <clears throat> that had a broken, broken headstock, um, and that's been re-glued. Unfortunately, there was there was quite a bit of dirt uh, in the wood along the join um, so as I've glued it down yeah, the cracks still showing so it's not an invisible an invisible join and there was a there was a crack on the uh, top here underneath the scratch plate which has kind of opened up a little bit um, due to the pressure clamping everything down uh, and a rather annoying reveal of wood here. Uh, but it's repaired, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's nice and tough. So I just got to uh, put some new finish on the back of this, clean it up so it's nice and shiny. And uh, see what I can do about the top here, repolish that, and uh, it'll be good to go. Now Ben's hoping to uh, to sell this guitar. This is one of Ben Wakeman's guitars, and uh, I might put a bid in for it. I don't know how much he's going to ask for it, but it's. I think for me, it's a really example of what a nice modern guitar should be or could be. It's really nice and slim, lovely body, a bit like me. Um, I mean, obviously the angled headstock is still probably not the greatest ideas in the world, but um, yeah, I can't remember how, I don't know how much of that I actually got on camera, but never mind. I'm sure you don't care. You're not watching this to learn about guitars. You're watching this to hear me ramble on. Now my uh, lefty, my lefty strap that I've been uh, holding back because I thought, you know, maybe I'd have a, I'd have a go trying to play left hand uh, because this hand doesn't work too well. Um, so it's so it's not too great for um, fretting. And there's the cat. Um, so there's, yeah, so the string broke on it. Um, I mean, I haven't done anything to the guitar since I picked it up. The string broke. The strings were strung on really horribly, but uh, <laughs> I thought, well, well, you know, I'll just give it a go. The string broke, and I thought, well, it needs stringing up properly, so I'll put some new strings on it. And I thought, well, if I'm going to put new some strings on it, I'll uh, check the frets and level the frets out. I thought, well, if I'm going to level the frets, 
hell, I might as well try and make it look nice for me. Uh, yeah, so uh, it all got a bit carried away, really. Um, so I've stripped it down. Excuse me, arsehole. Uh, I've stripped it down. I've left the, it was originally black. I've left the, the, the black around the uh, outside. And I'm going to just clean and polish that up. So it's kind of like a black edge. I've finished this with, it's very rough at the minute. I need to, you know, polish it up and clean it up. But uh, it's a very, very simple, uh, kind of like a natural green wood effect. There are some issues in the wood itself uh, while I was cleaning it up that were pretty nasty. This, this area here is, is, did not sand very well because it's got a very, very unusual wood, which is very dense in some areas and very um, soft in others. So you get a kind of a, an undulating finish, unless it was actually machined. This was just, a, just bashed away at my hand. Um, I'm not too worried about that. Um, I quite like its natural woody look. And that's why I've gone in with the greens and browns. I mean, this side hasn't been done yet, but there's some greens and browns in there to, to really bring it out. Now, what I'm thinking, um, I will take the dog out for a walk into the woods or when I'm going dogging or whatever, and uh, see what I can find to embed into a scratch plate. Um, I th silver birch bark would look awesome on this with that kind of finish. The other thing I was thinking is, is to collect up some, I've got some holly, uh, I, th I thought about bramble, but maybe, but just some kind of embed some, um, dried uh, plant growing inside here. And I'll, so I'll, I will route out a little bit of a channel, um, stain it all up and then flatten it all down with some epoxy. Uh, probably a sheet of glass on top. I'll probably, probably show you how they do that because I have no idea how it's going to turn out. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the other thing I've been doing is um, just working on the scr scratch plate uh, jig. So this is just a uh, standard strat pit guard shape. Um, now obviously uh, no scratch plate are the same, uh, neck pockets are different, but I thought it's probably a good place to start. The other thing I've done is I've built a little jig. It's, it's a bit scrappy, but that will once you once you once you drill the holes for your uh, switch, you can just pop this in in between. It says pop, pop, and uh, that's got a channel in it. That's set for this uh, Dremel, and that will you can use that to cut the uh, slot for the switch. Uh, I just need to put some end stops for I went where I want it to start and begin. Now I also no two switches are different. I can show you on this scrappy old scratch plate which I might use to, maybe not so much of a pattern, but maybe I'll use that for, maybe I'll use that for something. Uh, it's obviously it's a slightly different shape, but also the, uh, the slot is different size. Um, I can't remember. I think it was, it was a, a bit of a, a vintage style switch that came out of this. Uh, so, yes, holes for switches are different. 
uh, holes for knobs are different. Lots of things are different. So maybe at, at some point, if I start coming across lots of different sizes of switches, I'll probably make uh, the same kind of jig, but adjustable for different sizes. We'll see. Right. So on to the neck. Okay. Um, first things first. Let's go through some tools. Um, this is just a very very cheap. Uh, what do you call it? Claw pliers, cutters. That I've uh, I've ground down the top to make the uh, to get right down to this edge here. Let me just put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. So that's so these can be used as fret pullers, and you can get right in underneath the frets to pull that out uh, without the ground grinding down. You, you just can't get close enough. Um, so. Cutters, yeah, well these are just normal cutters. Um, and because I'm using EVOs, I thought I'd better go up a notch. So these, this is my investments. I bought a nice big fat heavy duty fret cutter. So there's no messing around. Uh, the other thing I bought was a uh, notched straight edge. Oh, just a little tip. If you like me and you like putting the thing down on your fretboard and oh god, you, you need you, oh, flipping egg, you need just just make up something like this, which is just a bit of foam with a slot cut in it, and you can just pop that in there. And you can just lift that up, put it wherever you want. You don't even have to have it touch anything, it's just there, so if it starts to fall over, it will bob right back up again. Hmm. Right, yeah, sorry, the bloody cat's annoying me. Constantly ask them to be fed every single moment of the day. The other thing, Now you can hammer in the frets once you put them back in again. Um, there's my other investment. Now I could have made these, but uh, like most things, when you work out how long it will actually take you to make it, you think, well, the actual expense isn't that bad. So this is a uh, Arbor fret press, so I'd be able to put this into my crappy drill press. It'd be good enough for this, and you uh, select the uh, the size radius you need, and uh, press the frets in. So I thought that would be a good expense. All right. Now let's get the let's get the neck back. All right. So I've got the camera up at this end because this is where all the action is going to be, quite literally, for the moment. Um, this rig is just I showed you it in my other video, um, or my last video. It's a very, very, very simple affair of just allowing me to string up some strings, obviously some strings, um, to give me an idea of what's going on here. Now, this is an interesting part of guitar anatomy. Uh, it's very important to talk about, and I had no idea it was going to be this profound. 
that. Okay, that's that's not all particularly tight. So if I just tighten up at this end. I think that's a G, an E, a G, an E. All right, so that's kind of an E, and it's a bit bit buzzy. But if I come to, to this end and push this down, now I'll have to see if I can get the camera in at some point to show you this, because this string here, as I push down, it actually lifts up. So this angle here is actually creating a bit of up thrust on the string. Now, if I bring it up to a, an E, it doesn't buzz anymore. Certainly not as much. I mean, this, is, this isn't exactly a, a set-up guitar, is it? But that uh, it's interesting. Well, you just got to you just got to watch it. It doesn't take much tension. Before it starts lifting up, just a bit, just a tiny bit, just about there, and it's at its full height. So that's, that's important to recognise, that's going on. Now I'm sure it's happening on this side. But it is nowhere near as pronounced, nowhere near. Keep an eye on this string here, on this fret. So the, the tension is just straight across the nut. And as I tension that up, at this end, you can see, can you see? Can you see that string is lifting up? So I'm going to get in closer. There, you can see that. Now if I do that at the other end, not doing anything. So the string pulling down here is actually lifting up away from the uh, fretboard, which is interesting. The three different tools you can use for measuring string height. Now you can use one of these, which you place at the side of the string. Obviously we need that tension, right? But you place that up against there and you can use various different methods of measuring the height. Now then, you have to have pretty damn good eyes to use something like this. Uh, and it's it will give you a rough guide. You have to look down down here and you know like on this one where there's the little mark you have to just gauge it with your eyes. Obviously there's parallax and all sorts of things going on that can make that difficult. You can use something like these. Uh, now we know that this is a 42 thousandths or oh, 42 hundredths, yeah. well 0 0.042 let me just zero it out Of an inch, zero four two of an inch. This is coming in up. There we go. There's four two. And once you once you've got that, you can zero it out and use this 
to gauge your height. Um, but we are talking about, you have to just do it so the string's just touching. That takes a lot of practice. And uh, we are talking thousands of an inch. So that doesn't particularly work too well. And uh, you can get, obviously, nice fancy gauges for doing this. Uh, they cost quite a bit of money. I haven't got one yet. And there's the other tried and true, tried and tested true method. Your uh, feeler gauges. Uh, let me just find one where I know we're around about right. Well, let's try 0.4 millimeters. Now I've got to obviously hold that down to lift it up to get that tension. 0.4 millimeters is just moving the string a little bit. So you just slide these in till you see some movement. Point three millimeters there's a little bit of waggle so let's try uh, we want to add these up to three five don't notice the strings if you remember to pull the tension <laughs> let's do another check let's go to uh, point four again mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, so we're just nudging the nudging the strings at 0.4. So 0.35 millimeters seems to be the the height of the strings at that side. All right, let's just try the other. Right, 0.3. Well, you can even I can actually see underneath that. And let's try. Point four. Still room for maneuver. Let's try. Well, there's point six, so we're going mad. Let's try point six. That's just lifting it up. I'm looking for 0 0.5. Where is she? 0 0.7, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. I'm not sure what too sure what the ordering of, of these uh, gauges are, but they they're not in order. So you have to search around. Okay, let's pull that up a bit. Wee bit of movement there. So what we want to try and do is measure point four five. Seems to be somewhere in between 0.45 and 0.5. I think this has got to be the most riveting video of mine to date. Yeah. So. Let's get a bit of masking tape. Well, I had the masking tape here. The masking tape. So I'm just going to write so that low E is 
0.35 millimeters and high E is 0.45 to around about 0.5 it's. Have I put that the right way? It's greater than. <laughs> it's greater than 0.45, less than 0.5. You can't see that anyway. Um. So that's that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here and uh, end this video, and then I will move on to defretting the. Uh, the neck and we'll we'll go into that next so uh, see you later